So today's lesson is all about major scales. In fact, we're going to cover all of the major scales on alto saxophone in the sharp keys and the flat keys. Plus, I'm going to tell you why you should even bother learning major scales in the first place, why it's important, and also a little bit about the structure of major scales so we understand them more clearly and that will help us to learn them more quickly. So quite a lot of stuff to crack on with. It's going to be a good lesson to hang around. Hey, also, if you enjoy videos like this where I'm teaching saxophone skills and helping you to improve your playing, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button too, so you don't miss out on any future videos that I'm putting out. Right, let's crack on and get started. G'day, I'm Nigel McGill from McGill Music Sax School. Thanks so much for joining me for another one of these videos. Today is a hot topic. In fact, we've got thousands of students studying with us inside Sax School, and the tutors and I, we talk to our students a lot about major scales because it's so important. So today I want to give you a little free lesson that's going to give you an introduction to major scales and hopefully give you a really great resource that you can use and come back to time and time again to get your major scale skills Scales, skills together. Major scale skills together. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Now, I've created a little PDF worksheet for you. That's up here, or you can get it in the description down below. I'd definitely suggest you download that and have it on your music stand. It'll, it'll help you so much with your practicing. So today we're going to talk about what scales are all about, why we should even bother learning them, and a bit of a theory, but also I'm going to run through playing the scales so you can practice them with me. If you would just want to jump to the major scales, both the sharp keys and the flat keys, you can do that here. Here are the times you can jump straight to that part. But I do hope you'll stick around because understanding the theory and the logic behind learning scales will help you to learn them more efficiently, I think. So why should we even bother learning major scales? Well, the thing is, there's lots of different types of scales, right? We've got major scales, minor scales, pentatonics, blues scales, we've got all of your jazz scales or modes, chromatic scales. There's so many different types of scales. The reason we learn scales, though, is because all of our Western music is based on scales. Scales are the foundation of all the music that we listen to and the music that we play. So if we spend time understanding our scales in our technical practice, it helps us to be prepared when it comes to playing any other sort of piece of music. So it's not only going to help us to get a better harmonic knowledge, in other words, understand the chords and the sounds that are happening harmonically in, a, in the music that we're learning, but it's also going to help us from a technical point of view because it's a great way to speed up our fingers and get familiar with the finger patterns that we're going to use over and over again as we're learning pieces in all sorts of styles. Now, whether that's blues or jazz or pop or gospel music or ska, anything, it's all based on scales. So that's why scales are super important, and it's a great idea, whatever level that you're at, to incorporate some sort of scale practice in your daily practice routine. Now, inside sax school, we've got people who are brand new beginners, but right through to people who are seasoned, gigging professional musicians. They're out making albums, they're playing with people, playing in lots of different bands. And through that whole gamut of students, that whole range, Everybody in there is practicing scales because it's super important. And in fact, inside Sax School, I'm often running masterclasses with our members with proper world class players like Andy Snitzer or like Lou Marini, who played with the Blues Brothers. All of these guys still play scales on a daily basis now. So it's super important. <laughs> So let's talk quickly about the structure of a major scale, because if you understand the basic theory, then it makes learning scales much more easy. So every major scale is based on the same format or the same pattern of tones and semitones. So a tone is like a whole step in music, it's two semitones, and a semitone is a half step in music. So let's start off by looking at the very first scale that we're likely to ever learn, the C major scale. I bet you probably already know how to play the C major scale. So as we work through the notes of a C major scale, we notice this pattern emerging. C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. E to F is a half step. So we've got tone, tone, semitone, or whole step, whole step, half step. Then we've got another leap of a, of a whole step or a tone between F and G. And then the pattern starts again. G to A is a tone or a whole step. A to B is a tone or a whole step. And B to C is a half step or a semitone. So you can see we've got this pattern of tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So the great thing about this is that same pattern applies to every single major scale. So if you're the sort of person that likes to look at patterns and 
thinks in a very rational, methodical sort of way, then you might like to go through and work out your major scales using this pattern of tones and semitones. But if you're like me and you like to do things by ear, then you'll probably find yourself becoming quite familiar with that shape of the major scale and that pattern shape of tones and semitones. And that will really help your ear to guide your fingers when you start playing major scales in more difficult keys. So understanding that pattern is super important and keep that in mind as we're learning scales today in strange keys. Now as we work through our scales today, we've got quite a lot to learn, we're actually gonna work through them in the order of the circle of fifths. If you've not come across the circle of fifths before, it's just a really cool organizational pattern for the 12 keys that we use in music. And the nice thing about it when it comes to learning scales is that as we work our way around the circle of fifths in one direction, we're going up in keys where we're adding one sharp. Or in the other direction, we're adding an extra flat. And that means our scales get incrementally more difficult as we work around. So if you wanna learn more about the circle of fifths, then we've got some lessons inside Sax School that'll help you understand it better and also learn how you can apply the circle of fifths to your technique practice in a way that'll make it more methodical and more systematic and it'll actually help you to learn faster. We've got a 14 day trial running at the moment. There's a link down below. <laughs> So, sharp keys for major scales. We're gonna jump right in at the G major scale. And today I'm gonna to show you all of your scales in just one octave. Now the idea here is once you know the basic pattern of the scale, then you can expand that and practice it over your whole range when you're ready. But learning it in one octave really smoothly and evenly first is a great first step. So the G major scale is a great place to start because we're just using one sharp and that's F sharp. So F sharp is with our middle finger. And the notes are from G up to G and back down. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. And it sounds like this. Moving on, our next major scale is D major. And to do this, we're just adding in the note C sharp. Easiest note in the saxophone, no fingers whatsoever. Let's have a listen. For A major, we're adding in the note G sharp. So that's with our little left hand pinky finger here, G sharp. So remember, we've got F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp now. Let's have a listen. For E major, we're adding in the note D sharp. So for D sharp, we've got six fingers like D, but we're adding our little finger in down here. Let's play the E major scale. Our last major scale with a sharp key signature is B major. I really like this one. So now we're adding in A sharp, which is the same as B flat. Now there's a few different ways you can play A sharp. You can play it with your B finger on the B key and the little bis key like that. Or you can do it two keys and the side key down here. It depends which one you're most comfortable with. So try swapping between the two, get comfortable with both. There are other ones you can use as well like this or like this. But the two main ones are with the little bis key or the two keys and the side key down here. Okay, let's have a go. Now, you're probably thinking major scales are a little bit boring to practice. So to help you out with that, I have a series of lessons inside Sax School called my five minute workouts. And my major scale five minute workout is actually really, really popular amongst my members. So if you wanna check that out, it's a really great condensed way to practice your scale super quick and fun and something you can do every day. That's part of Sax School membership and you can actually get started with a 14 day trial. There's a link down below. Hey, now just before we move on to our flat major scales, let me know in a comment below, what's your favorite way to practice scales? I'd love to know. <laughs> 
Yes, it's time to look at our flat major scales and to spice things up a bit, I'm gonna use my zebra sax. You can actually watch the video of how I made this zebra sax up here. So our first flat scale that we're gonna to do today is F major and that uses B flat. Now we've just learned A sharp, which is the same as B flat in the previous scale, the B major scale. Uh, so you should know all about the fingerings that we, that we need for B flat, otherwise it's just F to F. So let's have a go at playing that one. For B flat major, we're going to add in E flat. E flat's the same as D sharp, which we've already learned. Let's have a listen. Our next flat scale is E flat major. And for this one, we're gonna add in A flat. A flat's the same as G sharp, which we've already learned as well. Can you see a pattern coming in here? The same notes keep coming back time and time again. Let's play the E flat major scale. <laughs> For A flat major scale, we're gonna add in D flat. Now D flat is actually the same as C sharp. So we've already learned this one. C sharp is no fingers whatsoever. It's the easiest note on the saxophone. But because it's a flat key, we can't write it as C sharp. We need to spell it as D flat. So let's have a go at the A flat major scale. <laughs> Okay, just two flat scales left. This one is D flat major, and in this scale, we're adding in G flat. Now, G flat is just a fancy way of spelling F sharp. So we know this one, it's with our middle finger uh, down here, exactly the same as F sharp, which you'll be really familiar with. So just be careful of that as you're reading through the scale, and recognize that G flat is the same as F sharp, but because it's a flat key, we need to spell it as G flat. Let's play it. Now just in case you're unsure about that low D flat, here's the way you do that. So D flat like, starts like low C, so three fingers left hand, three fingers right hand, the bottom key down here with our right in the, uh, pinky finger, and then we add our left pinky finger on the outside key here, so that's this one here. Can be a bit tricky to coordinate all of those fingers, so just think about your hand position to make sure that you've got enough reach on that pinky to get down to that outside key. So our last flat scale is our horrible key, G flat major. Hopefully you'll never come across this one. Now of course we could have written G flat major as F sharp major, but instead we've done it in flats. And the flat that we're adding for this scale is C flat. Now C flat is another weird one because actually C flat is the same as the note B. Because we only have a half step between C and B, if we take C and we lower it a half step, we actually get to the note B. But because it's a flat key, a flat key signature, we need to write it as C flat, okay? So you know how to play a B, it's just your first index finger. Um, but just be careful of that as you're reading through. In fact, take your time with this scale. It's a bit of a nightmare. So make sure you get all of those fingerings correct every single time you play it. That way you'll learn it as quick as possible. Here we go. <laughs> Well, there you go. We made it through all of the major scales on saxophone. Thanks for sticking through with me. And let me know in a comment if this lesson has been helpful to you as well. Your feedback really helps me. It helps me to make better lessons for you as we, uh, as we go ahead. Also, if you really want to make great progress in your saxophone and you're curious about how sax call can help you, then grab the 14-day free trial, which is available as I'm filming this. It's a great way to go in and see all the amazing resources that are available inside McGill Music Sax School. 
because we have thousands of students in there every single day using our huge library of courses and lessons that will help you really push your playing forward at whatever level that you're at now. Plus, myself and my team of tutors are on hand in there to answer your questions and support you all the way through. So I do hope you go check it out. There's no obligation. Just grab that 14-day trial and come and see what all the fuss is about. Well, whatever you're up to, keep practicing hard, and I hope I'll see you on another video real soon.